It is February 2021, and we are back with members of the Florida Power Boot Club for round two on our 2021 calendar year, the 26th annual Miami Boat Show Poker Run, and it is going to be epic. Uh, as we move into episode three, Stu Jones here and Ryan McCoy in the FPC Pompano Beach studio, and we are rolling right down into Key Largo with a lot of beautiful power boats and bikinis and a sunny day here in the Florida Keys. So before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Florida Power Boat Club's 2021 series sponsors include Blackwater Boats and their sister company, Deep Impact Boats, along with their exclusive worldwide dealer, Plantation Boat Mart. Midnight Express Power Boats, Mercury Racing Wide Open, Mystic Power Boats, Myco Custom Trailers, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, and our official prize sponsor, Superior Communications, providing us with Garmin and Icon products as prizes for our Poker Run events. And taking a look at our Miami Boat Show Poker Run official artwork, let's begin by thanking Nortec High Performance Boats, our presenting sponsor, along with Statement Marine, Outer Limits Power Boats, Marine Technology Inc., Legend Marine, Oakdale Yacht Club, Concept Boats, and Seakeeper. So as we kick off this episode three, we are rejoining the club members as they arrive at Gilbert's in Key Largo. There goes the Project 1080. And guys, a uh, little known secret, all this docking on the backside of Gilbert's in Key Largo. So yes, hi ladies, how you doing? They're happy to be here. A lot of pretty FPC girls joining us and everyone is all jazzed up. The vibe here is very friendly and casual and rustic because we're in the Florida Keys and the Dockside show is over the top as we now listen in to Bobby Brown who's going to entertain us for the next few minutes and we're just going to cruise around the docks and watch all these cool boats come into Gilbert's. Remember, it's only Thursday. It's the middle of February. Half of these people have escaped a snow-covered front yard. They had to dig their trucks out. They had to dig their cars out, go to the airport and get on a plane and come down to sunny South Florida. And uh, for many of them, you know, we're just escaping the COVID. It's not over yet. That's why Bobby is singing with his mask on. He still sounds pretty good, doesn't he? But remember, guys, in mid-February, the COVID curse was still very much with us. Only the very lucky few have been uh, vaccinated already. In fact, I got my vaccination in March, about uh, you know, a month after this event. But most of us still not vaccinated. But, you know, this is an open air venue. That's why we chose Gilbert's for this event. That's completely open air, including the tiki bar and the beachside seating, the dockside seating. And, of course, power boating, as we all know, is an open air fun thing to do with your closest friends. And so far, so good as we uh, catch up with lovely Sarah cleaning that new MTI 390X that they are just loving. And as for the collection of boats here, you know, from old school Outer Limits to brand new Shockwave, a 42-foot frame-in with quad outboards. And it is very much a family event for so many of us because to get together with your family in the middle of February and get out of the cold, this is the place to do it. What a great escape for hundreds of people and a record-setting turnout for this Miami Boat Show Poker Run. How come? Well, for a lot of reasons, you know, partly because the event has been running for 26 years and partly because people just want to get away from COVID and get away from the cold up north. But really, I think the main reason is that we have an entirely new format because of the cancellation of the Miami Boat Show, which would have happened just a week earlier. Uh, due to that, now we are having our own boat show format right here at Gilbert's and really setting things up nicely for the participants and for the manufacturers, bringing in our own fuel truck with 93 octane, all of the latest and coolest boats from all of the manufacturers. We just saw that Pantera 26. And of course, all of the OEM manufacturers on the aftermarket, like Mike Lavorsi from Lavorsi Marine Inc., one of our longtime advertisers and sponsors of the club. And a wide variety of boats. You just saw Wynn and Sarah in that 80 Sunseeker. John Kosker arriving as a manufacturing sponsor with his 42-foot Mystic. And I think that we have just found such a cool vibe you know, for a boat show, a performance boat show in the Florida Keys. You know, if anybody asks, well, what's the boat show like? 
you're watching it right now. <laughs> I mean, this is the boat show. I mean, we literally just took over the docks at Gilbert's the same way we would for a poker run. We rented all the docks over at the Anchorage across the waterway for overflow docking. And you'll see later in the show where we visit the Playa Largo and a few other resorts like the Key Largo Marriott and Mariners Club on the ocean side. We took over Key Largo completely. And all the rock stars in the performance marine industry are here. You know, when you can get guys like Sean Torrente to come down and join us with his uh, 390X and manufacturers like, you know, with the likes of MTI and Mystic and Statement and Nortec High Performance as our presenting sponsor and Midnight Express, the list goes on. And having Bobby Brown on the sixth stream for background vibe, that's what makes it rock. Quick shot of our helicopter landing platform. Not a bad way to handle the photo and video activities here for this event. Sure, there's a big cost involved, but you know we pay the extra cost to manage these logistics for such a big event. And to support our very loyal manufacturing and dealer sponsors, not to mention the participants who paid an event fee to be here, you know, having that helicopter every day is just fantastic. It gives us the opportunity to make sure everyone goes home with some beautiful photos and videos and great coverage. So we're going to start saying hi to our teams. Uh, Guy Wilson in his 34 Sensation CCX, one of three registered for the run. Tom Archer, who made it back after a one-year absence from the club. His Baja 38 Special somehow morphed into a 41 Skater with 1075s. Not a bad changeup in one year time. Brian Tapasic, all the way from California. He's got the entire family on board and his friends. And here's a team that is so loyal and dedicated now crossing the country not once not twice but three poker runs in a row now that is commitment new teams like jamie harrington all the way from maryland in this brand new 42 foot freeman team shockwave quad mercury racing 400s hard to imagine just how big this boat is but believe me it holds a lot of people and a little time for fishing he's got the rods out and another sponsor, Mark Waddington from Performance Boat Center. He's bringing his 42 MTI and the family along. They're going to have a blast this weekend staying at Playa Largo Resort. Presenting sponsor, Nortec High Performance Boats and one of their new flagship models, this 46-foot flyer. They've got the roof up. That's a mechanical hardtop that comes up. Captain John Mahalik, longtime club member. He's got Niels Johnson from Nortec on board. And they are here to put on a show because they have all of their new models on display at Gilbert's this weekend. Well, the chopper is uh, spooling up, as we say, getting ready to fly. But when you see this, guys, that means it's time to go. But you don't hit the throttles until the helicopter is in the air. That is the key, because if you do get ahead of the chopper, you might get missed. Ray and Christine Grimaud enjoying their new Mystic 42. Big Shot 2 is their second one. They bought the first one about four years earlier. John Herman, first time with the Florida Powerboat Club, Triple Mercury Racing 450s on this Total Marine sponsored 38 Fountain. There are a handful of new midnights on the event. Uh, Rick Townsend, you know, really showing up and putting on a show with this 34 midnight. I'm gonna call it the mini super beast. And a lot of outboard cats just everywhere. Uh, John Wittenberger Jr. with his 30 Spectre. Uh, lovely Natalie on board. Did you catch the matching bikinis? And in case you're wondering, you know, how could we possibly do a boat show with so many different boats all tied up? Well, the plan was to just come for lunch and just, you know, everybody tie up and have lunch because we're mixed in with all of the manufacturers and the participants. So once lunch was over, we broke up the rafts and everybody went off to the various hotels where they were staying. And then the manufacturers and the dealers who sponsored the event to then put their boats in position at the allocated spots that we gave them, uh, which are primarily most of the face dock here at Gilbert's. There's Howard uh, getting ready to run. Trust me, guys, we got a good segment just a little later in the show of that 41 Apache. Team Seakeeper joining us once again as they have now for at least three years in a row on this event. And there's Jesse and Stephanie Newman getting ready to run in that brand new Nortec 500. And here's a cool little cat we're seeing for the first time. That's that Costa CCB hybrid. And just a little bit of a bumpy ride from our helicopter as we zoom in. Remember, hard to fly these R44s at such a low altitude. Uh, the winds have apparently died down just a little bit. So makes it kind of hard for our pilot Lewis to keep a steady ship at such slow speeds and low altitudes. Did you guys see the uh, dolphins there in the bottom of the screen? Amazing. 
So we're now going to step this up to about a three camera shoot as uh, producer Ryan McCoy jumps on board the Project 1080 cigarette and he's going to ride with me for the next leg. Uh, we're going to shoot from the chopper and I think we've got a GoPro in the cockpit of the helicopter so we're going to get a lot of cool angles. Remember it's not a very far ride. We're just going from Gilbert's which is one end of Key Largo uh, to the other end of Key Largo stopping off at various hotels along the way. Well, I'm going to resume pace boat duties in the Project 1080 today, uh, unlike the chase boat duties that I normally do, but uh, need some navigation around here, these areas. A lot of guys are going to follow us around. So let's listen in to these Mercury Racing 540s. The boat has been running strong. So we are currently running on Blackwater Sound. Uh, we've just left Gilbert's. Our first hotel stop is going to be the Key Largo Marriott. Uh, it's really close by on Blackwater Sound, but a hotel that we just recently added to the mix. Uh, we haven't gone there for a long time, but uh, it's going to be our first stop. We've got about five boats uh, staying there all together, about 20 rooms that we've booked. And my job this afternoon is just to make sure everybody gets to their hotel safely. And running right alongside us is Dave Maloney from Buffalo, New York, and his group uh, representing the Western New York Offshore Powerboat Association. It's a brand new Renegade uh, 2021 38 model uh, powered by triple 400 R's. They say it ran flawlessly. And we are seeing a lot more of these Renegades on the Florida Powerboat Club events. Miami built and a family run operation for well over 30 years. On some of uh, Dave's comments from his video bio, he said he had an awesome time. He's done plenty of poker runs over the last 10 years, but there's nothing like experience an FPC event, especially to the Florida Keys. And I'm happy to see, Dave, that you are also planning to put the FPC Bahamas trip on your bucket list for the summer of 2022. And here we are, just a hop, skip, and a jump from Gilbert's, uh, now arriving at the Key Largo Bay Marriott Beach Resort, a place that we visited back in the early 90s when it first opened. In fact, the Florida Powerboat Club was the very first boating club to come here back in the day. It looks like there's Mark Waddington in his MTI. He's the first one in. They have this nice little marina basin that'll hold about 10 boats. So we dropped off about five boats at the Key Largo Marriott. Now we're just going to go around the corner and find our way into the Marvin Adams Cut. Uh, there is the entrance right there where you see those red roofs of those condos. So it is kind of hard to find. Uh, it takes a little local knowledge to find it, but now we are entering the channel and it's going to be off plane and idle speed only for about the next mile. But it's a really scenic ride because you're going through these beautiful homes and it's a, kind of a part of Key Largo that a lot of people don't discover unless you look very carefully at your charts. And what's great about this pass is it gives you access to the ocean side. In fact, it's the only place where you can access the ocean for Oh, at least maybe 25 miles to the north and about 12 miles to the south, which is Tavernier Creek. And that's, of course, the US-1 highway there, and we are going under the US-1 bridge now. So take a good look at this clearance. Uh, some of you guys with center console boats, so most of you can make it with a center console, but you might have to bring down your whips or some of your fishing gear. Uh, but it's worth the effort to go through here. And for the sake of those who are all staying at the Mariners Club, I think we have at least uh, 15 or 20 units there. There's probably 10 boats that are going to be docked at the Mariners Club. This is the only way that they're going to get there. And if anybody recognizes that house with the green roof that used to belong to Mark and Eileen Fisher, we spent a lot of time at that house watching boats go back and forth down this canal. So while these teams are at idle speed, let's check in with the helicopter. And it is dueling fountains here as we catch up with two brand new 38 fountain center consoles. Uh, the one in the red is Total Marine, that's John Herman. His rig is powered by triple Mercury Racing 450s. And uh, in the white boat, that's Tom Crowley, one of our event sponsors. And his 38 fountain is powered by quad 400 mainline outboards. And this boat is rigged to go either way between fishing or poker runs. And along with having very similar boats and being in the marine business, they're from the same backyard. Tom Crawley from uh, Oakdale, New York, which is Long Island. And right across Long Island Sound, well, John Herman and Total Marine are from Norwalk, Connecticut.
And a very special shout-out to Tom Crowley and his crew for being one of our featured sponsors for the event. It's their first time that they have done a Florida Powerboat Club run and been a sponsor. Tom said in his video bio that he was very happy to take advantage of the beautiful Florida Keys weather while promoting Fountain Power Boats. And he said that the FPC event was a first-class mini boat show. So a big thanks to uh, Tom Crawley and Oakdale Yacht Sales for coming so far, 1,427 miles on a trailer to join us. Let's say hi now to a Buddy Thomas and uh, his lovely lady Nina who's on board. They came a total of 1,500 miles one way with the boat just to show it off. The very first time we've taken a look at this SL41. It's a relatively new model for Outer Limits. Came out in 2019. I remember seeing it at the Miami Boat Show for the very first time. Triple Mercury Racing 400 Rs. What a great package. I love the size of the cockpit. This is a great day boat. A lot of room for all your friends. And certainly with the reliability of those triple outboards, it's a great poker run machine. Now we're catching up with Pete Rivero, who uh, is really in his own backyard. He lives right here in Key Largo. Pretty strong showing for the last several events. Uh, three out of four. He attended the Tampa run back in September and Key West in November. He took the winter run off in January, but he's back now in February joining us here in Key Largo. But sadly, it's the last time we're going to see Pete for the rest of this weekend. He had a bad fever. He went home feeling really crappy. He said he stayed home in bed the rest of the weekend. So this is the last time we're going to see him for this next few episodes. Thanks for joining us, Pete. And going to spend a little more time back on board Project 1080 as we have this nice scenic ride through the Marvin Adams Pass. Going to speed things up just a little bit here, uh, but now you see us, uh, we're entering what we call Largo Sound. In fact, if you look at your chart, you'll see that's how it's marked. Largo Sound is just like a lake, kind of in the middle of nowhere. You're not quite in the ocean yet, uh, but you got to make your way through Largo Sound uh, out in around Penn and Camp Coral Reef Park, and then you're going to eventually find your way out into the ocean. So we've got Dave Maloney and his crew joined by Howard Bindit from Michigan with his crew on the Apache. There's a couple, two or three more boats that joined us for this ride. I actually had to double back and go chase down a few more boats because I wanted to have a nice sequence as we rode through these mangrove waterways of Penn and Camp Park. There's a short idle speed zone for about a half a mile when you get near the entrance to Penn and Camp Coral Reef Park. Uh, and once you pass this sign, which is Dangerous Bend, things open up again and just look at the beautiful scenery. And you can see by these little waterways why it's so attractive to people who are into kayaking and, you know, paddle boating and paddle boarding and that sort of thing. So it's important to really be careful. And it's okay to go on plane at this point, but you really got to keep your eyes peeled uh, out for smaller craft, especially these people that are on kayaks and paddle boards. Uh, but today there really wasn't much activity at all. We kind of had the waterway all to ourselves. And so you've got to really maintain a single file formation going through here. There are a couple more sharp turns that we're going to get to as we exit the waterway heading out to the ocean side. But this is just a little piece of paradise that you're not going to find if you don't go looking for it. But it's also good to note that if you do want a quick access to the ocean, this is the best way to go. So now we are out on the ocean side and uh, probably about a three or four mile run to the south uh, where we're going to find the entrance to Mariners Club in Key Largo. You can see now just a light, very light chop out here. Let's listen to Howard as he picks up on the throttles.
And going to catch up with Guy Wilson now and Team Peer Pressure, who is doing the very right thing. He's just staying in that vapor trail. He's like, I'm going to follow these boats. Like, exactly, because I'm not taking any chances. But you know what? That's a good practice to have because when it's your first time and you don't have any local knowledge, it's the best thing you can do. It's a 2017 Sensation 34 CCX. He says it's in fantastic shape, and i got to look at it dockside, and he's exactly right. Looks like he decided to give one of those 400Rs a rest uh, for the rest of the day, but apparently it seems to be running just fine with two. And now uh, running alongside with uh, Blake Perrin in his family 2000 model 34 Intrepid walk around center console. And if you look really closely, there's a bumper sticker on the transom that says, my other boat, it's a cigarette. And another one of our guests uh, joining us here at Mariners Club is Travis Weeks, along with his crew all from North Carolina. A special guest on board, Matt Raymond, who's a longtime club member. He's actually the one who put this together because he was going to bring his fountain. And they said, no, no, let's go play with Travis's new 36 statement. Well, that worked out really well because this allowed the guys to uh, get away and just have a fun weekend and Matt got to leave his big 48 Fountain Express at home and probably a lot less stressful on these poker runs when you get to leave a big boat like that back at home. Uh, but thanks to Travis for uh, coming along and, and for helping out Nick at Statement to showcase your new 36 Powered by Mercury Racing 450s. What a beautiful ride. And we now have the first round of boats arriving here at Mariners Club on the ocean side, still in Key Largo. And there's a great shot of the Marine Basin. This is why this is such a, an attractive property, because you can see that everyone's getting their own slip, a little protected marina, and all the condos that surround the basin. There's altogether about seven or eight different condo buildings, and it's a very luxurious property. Uh, every unit is different. Every unit is fully furnished. A lot of them are two-bedroom, three-bedroom. They even have some four-bedroom units. So you can pile 8, 10, 12 people in some of these units and have a great stay. And the location, you may not realize, but it's literally right across the street from Playa Largo where a lot of the other club members are staying. So it's a great location. And for what it's worth, you know, on the from the travel agent side of me, you can put eight people in one of these units for about $2,200, $2,400 for the entire four-day stay, Thursday through Sunday. If you compare that to paying you know, $500, $600 plus for a standard room at Playa Largo or one of the other upscale resorts, it certainly is a very cost-effective way to do things, not to mention having your very own slip. I think the rates for the docking are about $3 per foot, if I can remember. So I would have to say that, you know, for the extra little bit of distance that you have to go uh, to ride your boat over here, it's not really that big of a deal. As far as getting around locally, there's our van. You know, Bob... Uh, would service this location with our FPC shuttle. So all you got to do is uh, make a call or the shuttle is just on a dedicated route. So once it stops at Playa Largo, it circles back on US-1 and it rolls right in through the front gate and it circles the property. Those of you with larger groups or, you know, if you just want to stay together and have the conveniences of a luxury condo. And one thing that I just happened to notice on this visit was the forklift and the little dry stack marina off to one side. It's primarily for the members only, but nice to know that there's uh, marine facilities here. And I think it really is the best of everything for those who are looking for that style of accommodation uh, with a private slip. And for those of you who do wish to get one of these uh, units for next year for the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, we already have several of these blocked through our rental agent here in Key Largo. Um, so we really have everything from two bedroom to three and four bedroom units so you don't have to worry about booking them now. We'll have a number uh, in our selection when you register for the event. And looks like our last boat has just arrived. It's not like Ronnie Zolak to be the last boat at the marina, but, well, he picked up this cigarette from another club member and just took his time to enjoy that scenic ride. So we are going to jump back in the helicopter and get back over on the bayside. Looks like we got one more team out on the waterways, and that happens to be Bob Lottis from Massachusetts his 39-foot MTI 390X, a new boat for Bob. He also owns a 42 center console MTI, so he's got the best of both worlds. Glad to see Bob uh, back joining us. He's been a longtime supporter with the Florida Powerboat Club.
and now arriving Playa Largo Resort. Look back at the top of your screen. For just a second there, we could see the Mariners Club Resort. So that's how close they are, uh, essentially just across the street, across US-1 from each other. But of course, Playa Largo Resort, uh, wildly popular now with all of the club members because it is so luxurious. And it's a huge property uh, with a lot of amenities and a lot of different room styles. Uh, the marina works out okay. It's not a very big dock. As you can see, it's essentially just a giant tee head uh, with enough docking for probably 25 to 30 boats. does require rafting, and if you do want to slip, you're going to have to have a boat with a 10-foot or less beam. And that's uh, certainly not going to work for John Mahalik and his brand-new Nortec 46 Flyer. Uh, he's got a 12-foot beam, but we do have some special docking reserved for the Nortecs because they are our presenting sponsor. And here's a good shot of all the boats laid up on the dock. You can see it's still a very protected bay for the most part. And of course, it's a great location for a dock party. At least that's what the girls on Team Punch It decided. And I just wish I was there for the dock party because I heard it was pretty over the top. <laughs> but this is a very special time of the day when everybody just gets in and says, kind of like, let's celebrate this fantastic day. Let's celebrate our getaway from COVID. And we're now down in the Florida Keys with all of our friends. Let's celebrate the beautiful warm weather because we left Minnesota or we left New York or we left somewhere in the country that was cold and damp and miserable. And that is exactly why Stephanie Newman and all her girl crew on uh, the Dirty Money team for the new 50-foot Nortec, <laughs> she throws her she throws her wrap over the motor right, right into the water. Uh, who cares? Well, hey, there you, there you go, John. You got a job here on the dock. John Mahalik, our assistant dock master here, picking up girls' clothing from the water. <laughs> and we're gonna label this the Hot Moms Club because these ladies are all mothers and these moms deserve to let their hair down this weekend. And of course, that attracts uh, a little entertainment value as now the girls from Team Punch It decide to have a little twerk fest on the dock. It's okay, girls, you can do it whenever you want, wherever you want. And that old expression of what happens in Key Largo stays in Key Largo. Well, that just went out the window because welcome to the Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel. And with that, we now can welcome the last few teams coming into the dock. It looks like Randy Sism and uh, daughter Taylor have been out promoting the MTI line. And I think they took this 42 for a sea trial earlier and that is going to keep them busy not just today but for the next couple of days because they've got a huge lineup of MTIs for everyone to ride on. And it's a very peaceful scene here at the Playa Largo docks as the sun sets capping off a beautiful Thursday our first day of this four day power boating extravaganza featuring the 26th annual Miami Boat Show Poker Run to Key Largo. Thanks to all of our viewers for staying with us through this episode but the good news is we've got at least three or more shows yet to come as we continue our coverage of the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday festivities here with members of the Florida Powerboat Club in the heart of powerboating paradise. And I know that you guys don't want to miss any of those shows, so be sure to subscribe to our channel right now, guys, and click that notification bell so you'll get an update every time a new show is released. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming Poker Run events in 2021, as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club, and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page, and you guys know who you are, and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you wanna direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We have got a fantastic year planned for 2021 with members of the Florida Powerboat Club, so stay with us. Meanwhile, we're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer Ryan McCoy in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.